God. I greet the, the brethren with the peace of the Lord. I invite this church to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in the book of Matthew. Matthew. Matthew 24. Matthew 24 from verse 36. Matthew 34, 36. You play after after the text. You don't have anything? It's been better in the past. <laughs> Amen. Matthew twenty four thirty says thirty six has a falling. But of that day and hour no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, but but my father only. But as the days of Noah where so also will be, O the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drank, married and given in marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark, and did not know until the flood came, and took them all away. So also will the coming of the Son of Man be. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, Jesus here in this biblical passage, Jesus was pra practically, practically near the end of his ministry. Jesus was giving the last instructions to his disciples. And now Jesus was alerting the disciples as well as us regarding the end of everything. It passed 4,000 years until the moment of the deluge, the moment of Noah, until the time of Jesus, 4,000 years pass, And Jesus now makes a comparison of what happened in the times of Noah with what was, go was going to happen in the church in our days. If we look this comparison, this prophecy that was being fulfilled, that was about to be fulfilled, it is exactly what happened in the times of Noah. The situation Jesus speaks here was practically the same. So on, in the same way as the previous days before the deluge, they married and gave, gave themselves in marriage until the day in which he Noah entered into the ark. Everything was normal. People there, they were living their lives like if nothing was going to happen. It is interesting that Noah, he had a message. He was called by God to speak to the people that were around him about something that was about to happen. And Noah, he remained firm with his obedience to God. Noah remained with the definition in what God had spoken to him, what God has, had instructed to him, so for him to do. In, in no moment, Noah's faith was shaken. You know how many years Noah, it took Noah to build the ark? 
who can tell? Just make a guess. Uh, 120 years. That was a long time, wasn't it? Can you imagine? 120 years. You're there gathering the material. Everything was you know, on, on your back. It's not like today when you go to Home Depot and you choose it. In, in the past, it was there. You had to go to the forest, cut it, drag it, cut it. 120 years. And people, for sure, going to, towards Noah. And they were criticizing him, making those remarks, saying, Noah, are you crazy? Are you delirious? What are you going to do there? No, God said that it's going to be a great rain, a deluge, something that never happened before. Nobody has ever seen a rain in the way that Noah was uh, predicting. So, the brethren, are you, do you understand what Jesus said comparing the days of Noah with his arrival and the rapture of the church? The church of the Lord also has a message. Jesus is coming. One faithful church will be taken away. The world out there has never seen it. Nobody has witnessed anything like that. But the world criticized some with fear in their hearts. A while ago I was watching uh, an article, a news article, and in, um, um, a journalist criticizing in New York, criticizing saying the Christians think that they're going to be taken away, they're going to vanish, and that's how people speak. That's how people make remarks regarding what is prophetic, what is the project of God for salvation of man. Noah was not there preaching a religion. Noah was not there preaching a name. Noah was giving an example. Noah was, was giving a testimony of a project that was elaborated by God that was going to save all of those who had heard the voice of God. Noah was not preaching a name. Like today, many are not preaching about a name, a denomination, a label, a title. No. Today, the message of a church is Jesus is coming. Get ready. Because Jesus is coming. The church also preaches about a project. This project is to save men, is to take men out of uh, uh, hell, remove men from this sinful life, remove men from this judgment that is upon men. And God always established judgment upon men. God has always placed a judgment upon man. God always allowed this. Why? Because through judgment that were established over the world, over man, that God is separating those who hear His voice. Because the same judgment of death to those that disobey, the same, same judgment is for life to those who are going back to the Lord, uh, turning to the Lord, uh, the ones who hear the voice of God, the ones who give uh, proper worth to speaking about God, the judgment. The end days uh, proclaim this. It's not a denomination. It's a judgment. It's upon the world. If you open uh, the Bible, you'll find this. If you see Revelations, we are studying Revelation. If we look, we'll see that the judgment is being cast upon the world. The judgment is out there. There's no way to run from it. We have no pleasure in saying this. But it, it is in the project of God. It's established. The project of, the, of God has its course. And Noah was there. God has shown everything to Noah. The way the ark should should be made, the size of the ark, 
the dimensions. No, it was not was not an engineer. It was a Navy engineer. He was an engineer that could calculate and measure. He didn't even know what was about to come. The Lord said, no, the ark's going to come such as this and this. A hundred years would pass and no, had no idea what was going to happen. He simply followed that project that was elaborated by God. And today, when we analyze what Noah did, we see that God truly was in control. Everything has uh, a reason for it. God never does it anything by chance. God doesn't begin and let things happen and adjust and adapt to the situation. No. God, when He determines something, He knows exactly what is about to happen. God knew everything. He is sovereign. And God spoke to Noah and said, The ark has to have this size. And today we know that if it was different than that, the ark would not be able to withstand. Because that size was the basic size for you to make a, a large ship. Uh, sh this large ship that are able to withstand their, their the flood, flooding and the storms that might arise. It had only one door. Only one door on the side. Didn't have any window on the side. There was only one window on the at the top. It had to have three floors. So today, if we look at this, we will understand exactly what God wanted to say. Why only one door? Who is Jesus? Jesus is the door. He's the only door. Man, in order to enter into this project that saved his life, man needs to go through Jesus. Man needs to enter through Jesus and needs to open up their heart to Jesus. Jesus the only mediator between God and man. There is no plan B. There is no mother or God's relative. It's only Jesus. He's the only door. Three floors. Three floors. Why three floors? Because it speaks of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This project that saves men, this project that is ready to reach men's heart, has to have action in the operation of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If there, we don't have Trinity, if there is no government of God, if there is no presence of God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it doesn't work. Only one window at the top. Why? Why is that? Because the light, it can only come from, from the top. It can only come from heaven. The word says, look to heavens because from heavens come comes the help so noah could not run away from what was already established by the lord because god said that the rain was going to come it was going to destroy everything everything if for sure there were windows on the side noah and his family would for sure see what was going to happen. For sure the people that criticized Noah, for sure if the people denied his invitation, his word, for sure his closest friends, surely those who were there observing Noah for so many years, for sure they would see it that if the windows were there at their reach, so that they could see to the side, they, w they would probably see what was happening. The things uh, floating, for sure, people's bodies floating, and that might shake their lives, may shake uh, Noah's faith. But God knows all things. That's why today the Lord says that the path is only one. There will be a voice 
that was sound behind you. And this is the path. Don't deviate from the left or to the right. Man, when man is in the Lord, man cannot be looking to the things around man. Man needs to look only to the Lord. The focus has to be the Lord. Man should not get involved with the trials that come and to the difficulties of the life, to the the trees hidden uh, on the side of the, the ship. Noah should not be concerned with those things. And, and at no moment Noah gave up. He could have given up 10 years building that thing, 20 years, 30, 40. Man, all this time. No rain, not even a, a little dark cloud, nothing. 20 more years, 70, 80, 100, and no rain. He could have simply given up, isn't it true? Like many who are out there, and they have their doubts. Is it possible that God exists? Is it possible that this thing about salvation, is it possible that it's just a tale? My grandfather used to say that Jesus would come. I heard my grandfather, my great-grandfather speaking about it. Is it true? People have the right to doubt this. Because what is about to happen never happened before. No church was raptured to this day. There will be only one. One faithful church that has no name. That has no denomination. There is no commitment, there is no label, but has a commitment with God. Church has a commitment with the truth. Church has a commitment with the Word of God that says Jesus is coming. This is truly the church. If you are linked to this church that has no name, you, my brother and sister, you will see salvation in Jesus. Don't give up. Do not give up. And God spoke to Noah. Noah. There will be a lot of rain. The rain is going to come up and it actually happen. The high mountains were covered. And what we see today is exactly this. The same prophecy is being fulfilled. Because today we see crisis everywhere. There is no country um, strong and powerful enough there are no rich country that may not be going through, uh, un be living under the judgment of God. Everything in the time of Noah was covered by water. The anguish was so great, the tribulation was so great, there was so much water that it covered the whole region where Noah was. And today we see upon the world, if you see today, we see crisis everywhere. Crisis in, in poor countries, crisis in third world countries, as well as crisis in rich countries. Countries that call themselves self-sufficient, that, that don't need anybody, that want to isolate, but the crisis continues. You see, the judgment God of God upon the world, people killing themselves, people losing everything, people taking their own lives, their marriage being shaken, the structure and the economical world, everything you see. There is no agreement today. There is not a single place where you may lay your head and rest uh, without worries. You see in Europe, people leave their homes with their families to go to a park or to go walk on the street. You don't know if there, there will be a bomb or a person driving and running over everybody. That's what we see every day. People uh, leave terrified. I'm not saying this. Oh, oh, I need to go back to God. We cannot be worried about you. We need to have an experience with God. But the judgment is here. We cannot ne deny the judgment. We cannot. In the same way that Noah was in that situation, the world today lives in the same situation. Whoever made this comparison was, was not me, it was Jesus, 2,000 years ago. 6,000 years have passed from the time of Noah to Jesus and to, the, to this day. 
And the situation continues exactly as Jesus has described. Things are terrible. The water taking control of everything, dragging people over, going over the youth, going over the adolescents, the water entering to the homes, flooding everything, bringing the, the flood, bringing uh, harm and loss of lives and money. And the homes are like that, the marriages. They are being flooded with this rain, with all of it that is worthless, that comes out of the world. Our youth the, and adolescents, they are out there, living like without any hope for tomorrow. Rich countries. We speak about United States and Europe, countries considered as first world. I'm not even speaking about the poor countries. My brethren, but the word tells us that that while Noah was there, being carried inside of the ark, the ark had no uh, turn. There had no um, uh, motor. Uh, it had, n had nothing to turn itself. There's nothing. No was at the mercy of the waters, being dragged to one side to another. And many people feel like that, that there will be uh, God's will. Many people think, what is going to happen tomorrow? What, is going to, what am I going to do to do? What is going to happen to my family tomorrow? Is it possible that at the end of the month is going to come and I'm going to have enough money to pay for all my uh, debts? Is it possible that this infirmity is inside of my home? Is it possible that tomorrow there will be a cure for it? People live like that, thinking that they are being guided by everything that comes up. But Noah knew one thing. God was in control. The world was in a difficulty, it was under the judgment of God because of wor the world's disobedience. But Noah and his family was under the control of God because they were protected by the Lord. They were there for sure with fear of what was happening out there. But inside, they were being protected. Nothing happened to their lives. And you know how many days Noah stayed inside of the ark? Guess it. 1,010 days. 1,010 days. It's a lot of time, isn't it? Can you imagine remaining? imprisoned with a bunch of animals, or your wife and family, and the wife asking, you know, when is it going to f get a, well, finish? I want to walk outside. I want, want to see the sun. And the children for sure speaking, hey, Father, are we there yet? When you go to Orlando and people keep asking, are you there yet? Are we there yet? How long is it going to take? Imagine staying there 1100 days and without being able to say what, what, what to say to the family, hey, God is in control, calm down. God is in the control of everything. This is what the church feels like. God is in control of everything. Is Jesus coming or not? Is Jesus coming or not? God is in control. No one knows the day or the hour, only the Father. Because God is in control of everything. Everything that is enough for us, what pleases us is to know that we are hearing the voice of God and He has blessed us. We have not lacked anything. Sometimes a doubt may come. That's true. 
people don't know. Is it possible that that's how it is? Is it possible that God exists? I don't know what uh, the conversations that you used to have inside there. I don't know what you, uh, the conversation you have in your house. I don't know the, what instruction you give in your family. What is the debate inside of your home? But the best thing that you can say is that God is in control. We're not um, um, being carried by our own luck. God knows everything. The God, God knows what is going to happen when we wake up, wake up in the morning. God knows what is going to happen to us during the day and when we go to sleep. Because when we leave our homes, we pray to the Lord. and We ask for the provision of the Lord, the resource from the Lord. We ask for the help from the Lord. And by faith, we know that God has taken care of us. And the proof that God is in control of everything has always been is the place where the ark landed, where, when, where it stopped, it, it rested. Once the water began to come down, after the water went lower, you know where this ark ended up uh, resting? What is the name of the mount? It's not, it's not in Bituruna, in Minas. It's not uh, the mount in Bituruna, in Minas Gerais, in Brazil. Is it Everest Mount? No. Ararat? No. Yes. Was a Fuji Mount in Japan? Was in South America? Was it not in Valadares? No. Was the Mount called Ararat? You do know what it, what Ararat means? A holy place. The curse was turned around, in other words. The judgment of death is no longer judgment of death. The judgment of death is now judgment of life. And that's where we're going to. You know why? Because the curse that was upon the world, the judgment that was upon those that disobey the Lord, for us, the church, is the holy place, the place of blessing, the place where flows honey and milk, the place that the Lord has promised for Abraham. I'm going to take you to a place where it flows honey and milk. And it's to this place that, by faith, we're going to be, we're being guided to. And the same ark is the same project of salvation of man through Jesus. And if you tonight want to enter into this project, you need to hear this call. Need to hear t to the voice of the Lord, not the voice of a denomination, not the voice of a pastor that you don't even know. But you need to hear the voice of God, because that's what Jesus said. Hear. The same way it was in the days of Noah. That's how it's going to be the arrival of the Son of Man. But many didn't notice uh, until the deluge came. And took them all away. But we live. We as a church. We hear the voice of the Lord every day. And you tonight. We invite you. We as a church. We invite you. For you to listen to the voice of the Lord. To open your heart. And to understand one thing. Independent. Of your will. Independent of my will. Independent of what is happening in the world, God has His project. And a faithful church will be taken away. And you need to know which church is this. Already said here, there's no name. We're not preaching Maranatha or denomination Maranatha. That's not what I'm saying. Our focus today, our objective here, is that you enter into this project that is in the side of this project that God will conduct you to this holy place, to this location where you will be forever in the presence of this God that can do all things. Amen. We're going to close our eyes while the praise group is going to sing a song. And you'll be at this moment speaking to the Lord. You'll be declaring to Him 
all the power, all the honor, and all the glory, all the sovereignty, sovereignty belongs to our God. Glory to Jesus. I invite everyone to stand up once again. All right, that day and time, no one knows, even the angels of heaven, but only this, not even the Son, but only the, my Father. My brother, if tonight you enter here, you're being uh, warned that a unique event is about to happen. And this event is the rapture of a people of a church. There's no way for you to say that you didn't know. There's no way for you to say, uh, to make a remark that you didn't know. You entered here and God has already alerted you. But don't be taken uh, disprepared like many were taken in the days of Noah. Like many will be taken in the way when Jesus comes. 
you can't from this day forward forget the past and begin a new life looking only towards heaven forget the sides forget the past and you see how God can take care of you God can take control of your life and guide you in the midst of the things that are around us and you see that God how our God is good how God is sovereign the Lord has shown that the woman who entered here and tonight she came with the question in her heart is God is exist she has going through a situation that's very difficult in her home especially with her husband but here the consequence of this of this relationship this bad relationship you can say improperly adjusted has brought doubt in her heart regarding the existence of not uh, or not of God they even uh, played there she for sure went out on the street and spent er all the money in the credit card and now had a problem with her husband no, I'm, I'm saying it's not true nobody does that but still you need to allow the Lord to enter into your marriage God for sure is absent you were treating you and your husband as two but in truth a marriage is one one plus one for God is not two and a marriage is one we need to allow God to be the one who will be in control of your marriage from the moment in which you begin to live this from the moment in which you live in a life in fellowship with God a life seeking the Lord you see that he truly God can do all things he trans can transform the water into wine what is this? Did Jesus did that he, in a wedding? He transformed water into wine. He can tra transform something that has no taste or pleasure. If you drink water, you have you feel has no, have no taste. You cannot identify sometimes, unless the water is really bad. But normally, water has no taste. And many times, marriage is like this. Sometimes, marriage loses its its taste, its pleasure, its beauty. And people live like this in a marriage. It's just tasteless. But Jesus transformed water into wine. He can remove what is causing pain and bring joy. Because wine it generates joy, removes man's reason, brings joy. Isn't it true? And that's what Jesus wants to say. And that's what he wants to do in your life. Allow God to enter into your heart. Allow the God allow God to enter into your home and you see how he will guide you to moments of joy in his presence we we'll continue having trials but God will allow you to understand and accept and forgive and comprehend what is happening so God exists he has always existed and the proof of this that he's here tonight showing what is in your heart that no one knows God knows you he is the one who searched your heart he's the one who is seeing your daily lives what you're going through your pain your suffering and he's showing I can't change it you just need to want it the Lord also has shown that tonight he's giving also to a man the means to live his physical and human effort to reach God and let God the Holy Spirit carry him to God sometimes people get confused I think I'm gonna go to heaven because I'm good I pay my taxes um, um, I love my family I'm good father I'm good a good a employer or employee People sometimes think that that's true, that doing good things is going to 
allow you to go to heaven. No, you're not. You're doing nothing more than your obligation. Pay your tax. Everything else, you're not doing any more than your obligation. But go, in order for you to go to heaven, you need to enter into this ark. You need to enter into this project because only through Jesus you have access to your eternity. There's no other means. Amen. Glory to God. Let us close our eyes and pray. Bring the service to a close. And if you desire, you want to give assistance. If you want a prayer to your home, to your family, to your health, the pastors, deacons, and ushers are here. And we want to help you in whatever is necessary. We, as a church, we can testify of the great power of God. And it's a great joy for us. It's an honor, honor to be able to say that God is in control of our lives. God takes care of everything. Let us close our eyes. Lord Father, we want at this moment ask that you continue speaking to our hearts, to the hearts who entered here tonight, so that this service, the action of the Holy Spirit, may generate faith in many hearts and that your spirit may awake many who are living, sleeping, many who are not paying attention to the prophetic moment in which we are living. And so that your spirit may place many on the path who is the Lord Jesus. Remove God in the name of Jesus, the incredulity, uh, the, uh, the fear, Lord, the pride, and I pray salvation tonight, Lord, so that we may see the result of this service and that we, by faith, see life surrendering to your feet and that we may have a week of victories in your presence. Is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The bread may be seated. We'll continue singing uh, softly. And if you want, you can raise your arm or your hand. I'm going to ask or ask someone beside you to do it for you so that we may go towards where you are. 